Hello there, it's your brother, your son, your friend, my grandpa's are coming to you um, today with the word of God. I believe that it's, we, we really need to be each other's keeper in times like this. Um, today, I kept on asking myself, and I've been doing that for a while now, that what are we living for our children? Um, what are we living for our children? As I have seen and, I've, and by observation, or I have observed, that the quality of life keeps on dwindling as the day passes by. Yes, it's, it's, it's almost as if genuine Christianity has been ridiculed to nothing in our lives today or in our dispensation today. And now what is, 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 is rather respected and highly exalted is what is obviously sim or seemingly the gimmicks that uh, we see around on our media spaces because the media wants news and anything that comes around that can be marketable is, is what we promote as Christianity and especially because um, genuine people have also are very careful to come out because Christianity is all about the relationship with God and you're not too careful uh, whether you have to come out or put a camera on yourself to share that relationship, that intimacy you have with God to the public. But I believe that um, I don't fault anyone, I don't also force anyone, but I believe that it's high time we need to also recite ourselves and trust in God to move even when we put uh, a camera on ourselves to be a blessing to lives because in the absence of the truth the force will be preached and it will go a long way to become a detriment not even to only or not only to us but also the own generation in the comfort so please we have to really look at the edge so please Christian, genuine Christianity pays. Perhaps it may not give you the five star hotel. It may not necessarily give you the Rolls Royce or the luxury, luxurious things and life. But it does surely pay. I like what Proverbs says, Proverbs 2, 22, verse 2. So one thing the rich and the poor have in common that they were all made by God. So whether rich or poor, it is not because God decided to make you rich or poor. I think there are principles to make you. So if you really want to be rich or poor, or if you really want to be poor, uh, there are principles, and I know that nobody wishes to be poor, but there are principles to follow for you to assess the worth that our Father who has in heaven has bestowed unto us. With that said, it is very, very wrong to manipulate the relationship we have with God for money. It is absolutely wrong to untwist people all in the name of amassing worth for the church or your church. Let me say this again. It is very wrong, absolutely wrong to manipulate and the word is manipulate however you do it and if it is not led by the Spirit of God that you should do it to take money from people and it's an extortion and it's very wrong to do that. Now, this is what it may seem that is happening, quote and unquote. This is what I'm not saying that there are not people who are genuinely making money in the system who are Christians. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that there are lots of wannabes in the system. Those who want to, they, they want to become like the Estudanabers of today without knowing what the Estudanabers of yesterday actually went through. They want to become the Jumatans of today without knowing what the Jumatans of yesterday went through. I believe that there was a time I heard or I might have suggested, or probably I think I heard from Jimetal himself, see that if you want to become like me, you must be ready for my pain. Something to that if I'm, I'm not really coaching him perpetually. We must be ready to pay the price to be 
who we want to be in the future if we want to represent god as a financial pillar that we there is a price to pay until you pay that price don't just assume that you can just quote scriptures pick a bible verse come on air and just make money for yourself just like that if you do that if you do that you are nowhere different from the one who put the gun or a knife and at that point took money from someone so please it is it is very worried and this thing it has been a burden of my heart because uh, we have children coming up and i'm asking myself what are we living for them what are we living what virtues are we giving to our children now i tell you preachers i tell you children of god i tell you pastors apostles evangelists teachers and all those who operate in the five-fold ministries that it is not enough even preaching in preaching the word of god because the word of god yes has the power to what to transform but now people are now what ridiculing the word of god Hey, let me say it this way. I have to be careful and I pray for mercy to actually say this to be a blessing to you. Growing up, the word of God, it was, it was in, we didn't have to even tell you this was a word of God because the power that came after the preaching of the word was enough for us to say yes to God. Lately, I, I don't know whether it's a story that we tell that is not backed by power. I don't know what is happening, but I know that God is still in his church. And I know that we have to rather position ourselves so that whatever word of God comes out of us can, becomes a blessing, comes with power to transform, comes with power to heal, comes with power to restore, comes with power to snatch people from hell's gate. I believe that we need to come to that point where the power of God is seen through his words. When people are going to be a blessing to you or to sow into the ministry, and because of the evidence of God's governance through you and through God's word, through you. And that is where Christians we must position ourselves. Where, 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 where we try to use our minds to preach the word. When we try to manipulate the system and, and, and to see what is happening in the life, now we are all becoming psychologists and using logical instead of faith. Please, please, please. Genuine Christianity, yes. I know that times are hard and we need the money. I personally pray that people receive financial blessings and financial breakthroughs. But it is not to be traded for the genuine relationship you can have with God. This, this is a privilege to come to God. This is a privilege to be called a child of God. It is a privilege and a humbling moment to be called, to be known as one who has dedicated himself or herself to be to do the Lord's bidding and to do the Lord's work. Please let us treat that. When we do that, we are not doing well to the generation of God. Because what we live for them is how to extort money from people. How to tell lies just to fill their bellies. How to be, to, to be light in the faith. Let us rise up, church. Let us go on our knees and pray. And I know that when we pray, our Father who art in heaven, is faithful to his word, is faithful to us, is faithful to whatever he has said concerning us. And that his power will be at work in us. His power will be at work in us. When there is a great move of God, we become a solution to life's problem. When there's a great move of God, we become a solution to life's problem because Christians are a solution to the world. So I love the scripture that says that the world waits in eager expectation for the manifestation of the sons of God. We, they are waiting because we are the solution to the world's problem. Hmm. Let me read something from Matthew. 16 verse 26 which says that for what is a man's profit or what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his own soul yes you can live a life you can live a life I know that Christianity is also about accountability. 
you can get drive all the cars. I'm not saying that it's bad to drive all the cars. I'm saying that earn it. I'm saying that earn it because God is able to bless you. <laughs> God is able to do it for you. I'm not saying that move the hand of God, manipulate it in the ears of men. Tell them what is pleasing to their ears to make money. I'm telling you to tell them the truth. And once you tell them the truth, the truth has set them free. And the truth has also set you free. And then you, as a child of God, will come and be a blessing to the kingdom of God and also to your family and to your society. Let us rise, church. Let us rise. For lives are being lost. People are perishing. Now, it doesn't matter to some people whether there's a heaven or not. Because, yes, people have come out in the name of God and have done things that have ridiculed the name. But I pray that the revival comes in our way. That God, as He is arising again in our lives, you and I will rise in the power and in the authority of Jesus Christ. Now, wherever we stamp our feet, wherever we go, the presence of God will reign. The power of God will reign. Our kingdoms will move. For the kingdom of God will reign in the mighty name of Jesus. God is real. God is real. God is real. And you believer, I want to also task you that God has hacked his ears towards you. Just lift up your voice and pray to him. Don't go knocking, don't go talking a lot of things. Pray based on the word, on his word. And I love what Miles Monroe said. That has been a blessing to me over the years. That the only thing that is above God is his word. Because God cannot be a liar. He is not a man to lie. Therefore, when you speak God's word back to him, he has no obligation except to be reminded to do that which he said he was or he is about to do. And if he says that he knows the thoughts he thinks towards us, I know that definitely as the scriptures say, they are good thoughts concerning you. And that the will of God will manifest when we let up operate and position ourselves well in him. Therefore, child of God, let us rise and position ourselves well in our Father and our Maker. That as times are hard and people want to do anything and everything possible to make a living, just to survive, including killing their own blood relationships and other human beings, taking the lives of others. I pray that you and I will receive sharper revelation and visions into the things of God. And as Jesus Christ said that whatever he did, he saw his father do in heaven. You and I will be able to connect to the heavens and see what God is doing concerning us. Therefore, what we will do is to stand in the God for others. We will stand in the God for our nation. We will stand in the God that whatever God wants to do and relocate and redownload or download to earth, oh, we will become the glorious vessels God will choose. And believe you me, believe you me, then you will know that the new creation, uh, relation with God is actually a treasure that once you have, you don't let it lose. I'm telling you, yes, there are hungry times. We have been there, I have been there. Probably I've not even seen the worst of it. But I trust in God who is able to do all things and work all things for our good. Now, I love the song by Nathaniel Bassett, Tim Joffrey, and the other third person that I don't remember. That what the enemy meant for your evil, God is going to turn it around for your good. That was a prophetic song and a prophetic message that I'm speaking back to you again. That that's so the power in the word of God said that what the enemy meant for our evil, God is turning it around. It doesn't take one city from you. It doesn't take anointing oil from you. It doesn't take oil from you. It doesn't take water from you. It doesn't take anything from you. It takes a genuine relationship and a heart of repentance. If you accept the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior, 
All these treasures and gifts are there for your taking. Just take them. Come to Christ as such as your Lord and personal Savior and enjoy this life and love of refreshing and of good health in Him, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Beloved in Christ, I, 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 I believe that you have been blessed. I believe that you have been reminded that there is a relationship to have. Not a relationship with men. Yes, you need a relationship with men. But there's a relationship to have that helps you walk with men. And that's a relationship with God. And I extend a hand to you that take God's hand as God stretches forth his hand towards you. Take this hand. Don't let it go. No matter how hard it is, be real to it. Be genuine to it. Be consistent. Persist on it. And I tell you, brother, sister, <laughs> God is not going to make you lack. He is going to provide all that you need according to his riches and glory. And go, go before God on your knees, brother, and love on him. Now, I love you. God loves you. I don't have a billion dollars in my account. But the joy of the Lord makes me feel that I am more than rich. I know that as I continue to pray and apply the principles of God to be rich, working hard and being diligent in everything that I do, God will bless me to be rich. He will not make us beggars. He will not make us beggars. That he will make us lenders. Preach the word of God. Love God. Live in peace with everyone. Live in righteousness. Live by the word of God and in the Holy Spirit. And let the power of God be evident in your life, in your marriage, at your workplace, whatever you do, wherever you go. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you and it will attract unbelievers it will be a blessing it will be a light that also shows or light the path of others to come to god we people are watching you we are watching how you marry how you you go to work how you go to school what you do on campus how you eat they are watching us and they are learning from it a wrong person is watching from your right he may not turn to right now but believe you me, he's watching, he's learning. And as you continue, beloved, he will join eventually. She will join eventually. Let our lives preach the gospel. Let our lives preach the gospel. Let our deeds be seen to glorify God. And that we will also watch. Bring back the quality of life that is needed in our lives. And it will become a blessing to even the generations of God. Let's love one another. Let's live in peace with one another. Let's support each other in prayers, in finances, in what I view, in word, in speech. Let's not leave people to commit suicide. Let's not leave people to be depressed so much that we don't even know what killed them. We think that probably it was their time for them to die. But no, probably it was what she did. The attention you're not giving to the brother. Is killing them. The attention not given to the sister is killing them. Let's hold hands together because God in the beginning was really was fellowshipping with God. Let's go back to the place of fellowship with God. And it will be a blessing to all of us. Shalom, peace to all of us. You said brother, your son, your friend, Michael, and Bonsa. I am out for now.